still held. Still being held. You did, that's a great job. You've applied the grit. We're all fine. That's tremendous. If there's anything I know, games love giving people companions. And sometimes that's great. That's fucking teamwork! Other times, not so much. While some partners can sometimes totally make the experience, there are some partners that just make you feel like you'd be better off alone. Which is why I bring you the top 5 partners you could do without. Now let me clarify some things. Not everyone on this list is a terrible character. Only most of them. There are actually a couple characters that I really like, but for as much as I like them, these are characters that I feel are either annoying, unreliable, or unnecessary to the game. Now with that out of the way, what's going on everyone? I'm Warbot and let's get started. Ghost Trick is pretty freaking sweet. In this game, you play as Sissel, a ghost with amnesia and sweet ass sunglasses. At the core of Ghost Trick is an adventure game based around the idea of possessing and manipulating objects to your will. Most of the time, you go back four minutes before someone's death in order to avert their fates, and that's where most of the story progresses. Coming from the same guys behind Ace Attorney, you're gonna meet all kinds of eccentric characters. You'll meet characters like an extremely excited Pomeranian, a swanky detective who dances at every moment, a talking desk lamp who is a talking desk lamp, and a stern, no-nonsense chief of police, who I personally like to call Adolf McJaws. And of course you have your spunky female redhead sidekick, Lynn. Now don't get me wrong, just because Lynn is on this list does not make her a terrible character. Lynn is perfectly likable and fun and is even helpful at times. But as a partner, she has one major issue. She kind of dies. A lot. Oh, and before you scream spoilers in the comments, this happens in the first 10 minutes of the game. Hell, this happens three times in the first fifth of the game. Lynn's got the survivability of someone driving a Ford Pinto. And the game knows this. For God's sakes, this character's music theme is called Red-Headed Target. Sorry Lynn, but you're unreliable. As dumb and cheesy as it sounds, variety is the spice of life. We all know this. The Final Fantasy mages sure know what I'm talking about. You have all kinds of different mages. You have your black mage, white mage, red mage, green mage, beige mage, cage mage, and of course blue mages. But to be honest, blue mages are not exactly my favorites. Unlike the other kinds of mages, blue mages learn and use abilities from monsters. Now that sounds pretty cool, and it is. But the downside with blue mages is that depending on the game you're playing, they can be kind of a nuisance to use. Enter Final Fantasy IX's Quina, or is it Quina? As a blue mage, how does Quina learn her abilities? Is it by studying her opponent's every move and then duplicating their moves with extreme precision? Pfft, no. She eats them. But let me tell you, she is a picky eater. Trying to learn new abilities by eating monsters is like trying to catch a rare Pokemon. You have to get their health just low enough, fuck! And speaking of Pokemon, look at Quinn's design. It's like the horrific love child of a Lickitung and Chef Boyardee. As far as her personality goes, Quinna has only two things to her. Thinking about food and speaking in broken English. It should come off as no surprise that Quinna is a flat, annoying character. But I have a theory. One of the lesser aspects of Final Fantasy IX was that it made a few infamous nods to Star Wars Episode I. I'm talking specifically about the scene right before the Necron fight, the Yoda quote. This nod makes me wonder if there were any other inspirations taken from Star Wars. Hmm. Nope, can't think of anything.
Chrono Cross. This was one of my first Japanese RPGs that I ever played. While this game is nothing like its predecessor, it's still a great JRPG with a crazy storyline, a really unique battle system, and a simply outstanding soundtrack. And of course, who could forget your loyal party members? You know, guys like... that guy, you know, he had magic and a staff. Oh, and that guy, he had the thing with the thing. And, um... who? Okay, scratch that. No one remembers these guys. Yeah, one of the more defining aspects of Chrono Cross, you have 45 different party members. That might sound kinda cool at first, but there are some issues with that. Issue number one. Your battle team only has room for three party members, and one of those party members has to be the main character. So essentially you only have two slots and 44 characters to choose from. That's absurd. Issue number two. Most of these characters have no significance to the plot and have very little character development. In fact, most of the time, you just simply recruit party members by really just talking to them. In most JRPGs, it's supposed to feel exciting and fulfilling when you get a new party member. It's supposed to, like, have some significance in the plot. Like, when you get a new party member, you're supposed to be like, Yeah, I got a new party member! Awesome! But in Crawl Cross, it's more like, Oh, another guy. Guess I'll add it to the pile. Issue number three. Just on a base level, the designs of some of these characters are just bad and dumb. They're ba dumb. I mean, what better people to help you save the world than a fisherman, the fisherman's mom, a scarecrow, a turnip, a rejected beanie baby, and Isla's mom as a child? What? Issue number four. The stats and abilities of about 80% of these characters are hot. GARBAGE! These party members are just the ultimate example of characters you don't need. Out of the 45 party members of Chrono Cross, you're really only gonna use about 8 or 9 at most. While none of these characters are really that bad on their own, there's just such a huge volume of them that I might as well just put them in one big entry. But if you really need one character, I guess the Beanie Baby? I mean, look at it. Why would you ever use that? Where's everyone going? Bingo? If you've been living in a cave for the last 10 years and have not played Resident Evil 4, A, go play it, and B, there are only three things you need to know about Ashley Graham. Number one, she is the poster child for annoying escort missions. During these missions, I can guarantee you, she will die at least three or four times. And no, not by the actual enemies. She's gonna get shot by you. She is the prime example of an attention whore. And by attention, I mean gunfire. I could not tell you how many times I would have my shotgun aimed at an enemy's head, and then have Ashley pop up right as I pulled the trigger. Number two, she is worthless as a character, just in general. The game begins with her as a damsel in distress, and the game ends with her as a damsel in distress. And finally, number three. Her favorite word is Leon. Did you know that according to the extensive research of our most celebrated scientific minds and scholars, approximately 99.8% of all life on Earth absolutely despises the annoying Anura known as Slippy Toad. However, for how much Slippy is hated by pretty much everyone, myself included, I would much rather have freaking Slippy by my side than Bloody Prince Tricky from Star Fox Adventures. Let me ask you this. How the hell do you make having a pet Triceratops suck? Simple. You make them the dinosaur equivalent to Scrappy-Doo. First of all, Tricky will not shut up. Dude, my dad's a King Earthwalker and he'll bash you up. If for some reason you think Navi is annoying, good lord, you're gonna hate Tricky. Throughout the whole game, Tricky is going to spout out about five or six random phrases for what seems like every minute. I'm hungry, tasty, play, cool. Wait, wait for me. Somebody stop this shark 
Prepare to hear that for the next 10 hours. I guess he's not the worst voice actor in the game, but then again, you could be Gilbert Gottfried with laryngitis and still be a way better actor than, well... Okay, I'll sell it to you. Edo so tavuk, General Scales. Oh, Flux! But that still doesn't make up for the fact that Tricky will never shut up. At least Navi had something useful to say. Tricky is just talking for the sake of talking. And while we are still on the subject of being useful, he is almost never useful. But is Tricky more useless than Slippy? Let's compare the two. Slippy is the Star Fox team's only mechanic, he can give you data on the enemy's health bar, and he can also give you items once in a while. And if he's too annoying for you, you can shoot him down. Tricky, on the other hand, his two most useful abilities are being a paperweight and being a shovel. Sure, he could also breathe fire, but it sucks. And you can also play fetch, which is good for, well, nothing. And unlike Slippy, you can't shoot him down. So yeah, Tricky is somehow worse than Slippy Toad. But hey, maybe I'm only saying this because Tricky is still a kid. Maybe he'll make something of himself in the future. Fuck! No. No, he doesn't. 